hand over to John and we'll get to the heart of the webinar. Thanks, Alan. Okay, so we're, we're talking a little bit about asset life extension. Um, so I thought it would be worthwhile initially to, 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 to basically go over why aging plant and asset life extension is such a, a hot topic for our industry at the moment. Um, these are some statistics that were generated by the, the UK HSE um, from European reportable accidents. Okay, you can see there between 1918 and 2006, um, there were around about 100, 100 incidents due to aging, and 28 of, of all reported major loss of containment events had aging as a contributory factor to the, the, the actual loss of, loss of containment. Um, as we know in high hazard industries, loss of primary containment is, is not a good thing. Um, and unfortunately, 11 people died in those 96 incidents and there were 183 injuries. And with fatalities and facility damage comes a big loss. So you can see there, there's a, on average across, across the industry, there's about 1.7 million uh, GB pounds per incident. So aging plant and the management of aging plant and asset life extension became a very hot topic for the UK regulator around about 10, 10 or 15 years ago. So we, we were seeing a lot of focus in this area. So what are the, the kind of age-related deterioration issues? Well, if you think about your facilities, um, the first question that everybody struggles with is to identify a particular design life for a facility. This will have originally been considered probably as a single line item in, in, in the EPC tender, saying something like the, the plant should last 20, 25, 30, 35 years. Um, and everybody will have will have bid on bid on that on that on that basis. Very rarely can we find evidence of existing plants what the actual original design life was. So that, that that's an operator that leaves you with a, a question about when. Um, when are you beyond that design life? If you are beyond that design life, how can you demonstrate to the, the regulator and your insurer that you are able to op operate safely and reliably? So this is all about looking very much into the future and you're looking at late life operation, potentially asset closure and, and then decommission uh, and, demo and demolition. So we, we look across the, you know, the whole of the life cycle from from basically design to commissioning to operation to to late life to closure and, and demo, demolition so the typical issues that we we tend to see um range depending upon the type of asset that we that we are looking at so so for pressure systems we we might be looking at things like uh, fatigue life or external uh, corrosion internal erosion uh, painting breakdown um, we may have a situation where the original standards of design and construction were quite poor. So already the, the plant started to age quicker than, than we would have normally expected because the original fabrication standards, the original design standards were not, were not so good. For things like electrical and control instrumentation, we have issues around obsolescence. Um, the active life of a DCS system can be, can be relatively short. Um, so, so clearly, if you're running for 25 years, there, there needs to be some work and some plans to manage your obsolescence, particularly as you get into, into later life. We also have our structures. Um, so we have our, our, our roads, our, our pipe bridges, our buns for our storage tanks and so on and so forth, which again need to be um, maintained and upgraded with fabric maintenance um, processes. And then we have all of the issues where we might have operating problems on the on the on the site. So so process problems caused by the operators during the course of of the design life. So there's lots of things that that influence what um, what can age equipment and when equipment can age. What we also have is we have the kind of the the organisational factors which come into play, where you are you know you are losing um, people are retiring. So we have a skills shortage. You lose corporate memory. So a lot of, the, especially the older plants, the original design information and the equipment history is sometimes missing. So it can be a, a challenge um, when operators are looking to, to, to assess the, these types of issues. So um, what, what 
best practice or what guidance do we have um, within industry? Um, you can see you can see kind of three documents highlighted there. The the UK HSE ones you will recognise uh, with the logo. The, the one on the left hand side and the one in the middle. Um, these are the 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 aging plant study and the managing the aging plant summary guide that were issued by the, the HSE around about 2006 and 2010. They are free to download from the, the HSE web, website. Um, and the, the book on the right is, um, is a US um, publication from the Center of Chemical Process Safety, um, which is dealing with aging, aging process facilities and, and infrastructure, which is it's a relatively thin book, and, it, and it's mostly a checklist dri dri driven approach uh, you've got to pay for that. So, in my view, there's much more, uh, much more useful information in the UK HSE documents, and they're free to download as, as well. So, um, there are no design standards for aging plant. So, there's no APIs. Um, there are no, there are no ISO standards and, and all of that type of stuff because of all the complicated interactions and issues that we we talked about in the in the previous couple of slides about. You know, just what goes on across a facility in 25, 30 years. So many different variables that you won't find any 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 design approaches to aging plant, but you will find best practice and guidance to help you manage manage these issues. And those are the documents that that, that you that we would, you know, we would we would advise you to, to to kind of to kind of look at. Okay, so so um TUV Rhineland um and ourselves when when we were, were in our previous uh, organization name, we've been helping our clients um, develop methodologies and asset life reviews over, over 20 years now across a, a number of different sectors. So you can see there, traditionally, the oil and gas petrochemicals were, were, were our, uh, our core business, um, but we, we've diversified in, 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 the, in the kind of the power sector and also steel making and things. So the, the methodology basically applies to any, any sector. So, so what we what we look to do here um, is we we essentially try to look at how aging issues will affect your business, okay? And that may be in from business disruption. It might be from uh, unplanned downtime. You might have to spend extra money uh, and so on and so forth. So, so what are the factors that are causing your, your particular uh, plants and business uh, business a problem? And then we look at assessing the life of the equipment to help you, you you solve those issues so what we need to do here is we need to you know to look at the you know how the equipment was designed um how it's been maintained what your asset care practices are etc um to to try and position the equipment on on the life cycle so 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 will you have to replace the equipment you know within a foreseen period of time can you can it keep going if you are maintaining it uh, with the the overall outcome being that we're looking to increase your safety and reliability moving forward. We can design a, you know, a, an optimum blend of when you need to replace, when you need to repair and, and so on. And then we have the sustainability issues where there's an opportunity to, to get new technologies into your, into your process plants, uh, reduce your emissions, uh, increase your energy efficiency and so on and so forth. So, so we, we've, got a, we've got a great methodology that's been tried and tested on various ages of plants in various sectors um, that works really well. And we'll give you a case study example later on in this, in, in, in the presentation. So, so what do we do? Um, well, essentially we're, we're looking to, to ask, answer the question is, you, you know, how, how do you ensure safe and reliable operation of a, of a facility beyond its design life? Um, typically these, these assessments are carried out facility wide so you can see here we have a, a list of, of the kind of disciplines that would would be involved so so we tend to look at um, at the full range of disciplines so we look at static equipment so pressure vessels piping systems we look at fire equipment we look at rotating machines civil and structures electrical control systems and instrumentation um, because what we tend to find is within organizations all of those individual disciplines do their own thing. And there's often not a lot of reporting or a lot of consistency in how the issues associated with that discipline is presented to the management team. So, so we, we look to, to do the whole facility. 
some of our clients say, okay, well, I'm, I'm having particular problems with my rotation machines. Can you just look at the horse? Yes. But there's, more, there's most value obtained by um, our, our clients when we look at, at, a, at a particular plant or a site and, and consider all of the, the different functional functions that are in there. So, so we, you know, a, a very, very high level question set here. I mean, there's a lot more detail in there, but we, we're looking to, you know, right back to the design basis of the equipment. Was it, was, it, was it designed appropriately? Was it well built? Have you looked after it? Um, the, the maintenance systems and the asset care practices that you have in place, do they help the long-term health of the assets? If you were doing just the minimum maintenance to get you to the next turnaround, or you've had your maintenance budget cut, that can make a big difference in terms of the, the long-term health of the, of the asset. Um, I, you, you haven't do lots of repairs and overhauls and replacement. You know, how, 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 how effective is your maintenance and inspection regime? We then look at, at the, um, the, the consequence of failure of, of the systems, either from a HSE perspective or from a production perspective, because the two might be different. So we, we look at not only the, the, the consequence of failure, we also look at the vulnerability that you, are, you, you have in place associated with, the, with all of the systems that you're using and the personnel that you're using to look after this equipment. Um, so when we were able to do that, we were able to focus on um, essentially the, the, the priority items that you need to tackle um, in the short term, in the medium term, um, and in the long term. The HSE particularly is interested in, in, in how you are managing your, age, your aging assets. So that th this, is, this, is, this can be incorporated within your existing asset integrity management systems, but it, you know, we need to make sure that it's highlighted and documented and, and, and looked after as you as you continue to operate operate the plant, and then lastly, um, we look at kind of how much is it going to cost you. So if you want to run your your forty year old plant for another twenty years, where do you where do you need to spend your money to ensure that it's going to operate safely and reliably? How much do you need to spend, and when do you need to spend it? So so some very important um, outputs from from the from the review from a from a long-term strategy and from a from a budgeting um, perspective. Okay. So when we carry out this this work, um, the, the graph that you can see here, this comes from the UK HSE's plant aging guide. And it's a, it's basically a, a number of failures and accumulated damage as the equipment runs through time. So it's not, it's, it looks a bit like a bathtub curve, but it's not failures, it's accumulated damage. So we've lost the front of the bathtub. So you can see here, we get some, um, some phases in the, and the HSE identified four phases um, of operation. So we've got initial commissioning. So as you might imagine, the plant is new. So you, you find a little bit about it. You're doing a little bit of damage because you're not quite sure how to run the plant most efficiently. You might have a, you know, your early turnarounds and so on where you find things that have carried over from, from the design issues that you, you couldn't cater for. Um, you then have a long period, which, which the, the HSE classifies as the mature stage. So this, this is typically you know, 10, 15, maybe even, even 20 years where you know the plant, you've ironed out all the teething issues, everything is nice and settled, no, you know, very few unplanned turnarounds and failures, you are happy with the plant and, and, and so on and so forth. We then get to the, to the aging stage, where you are starting to to see evidence of aging, whether that's corrosion, um, whether it's 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 kind of kind of partial replacement of of, of equipment like rotors on on big machines and so on, um, and then we get to the kind of the end of life phase where you're either going to have to be monitoring things constantly or doing doing lots of complicated calculations to justify further operation and things like that. Um, so within within the, the the TUV review, we try to position the equipment on this on this curve. So we have a, a number of categorizations that we come up with as part of the study, um, depending on where it sits on the curve. So so here A, as you can see here, category A equipment is something that needs replacing within the study period. So you would change the, the entire unit out. B, which is where you, you have a, a lot of aging and it's getting worse, you might have to do major repair. C is minor repairs. D is, okay, keep, keep doing what you're doing now, 
everything should be okay for the the the, the rest of the study period. And then we also have a, a an outlier, which is which is a category E, um, and that's if we were to find an issue that is um, quite extensive, um, would require you know a, a, an additional project or an additional piece of study um, in depth to to answer the question. So an example of that would be if we if on a tank farm uh, all of the all of the tank bases were subsiding, it would be it would be impossible for us to categorize that that equipment without doing further studies on you know what the condition of the foundations were um, and so on and so forth. So so we look into to categorize the equipment like that based upon the HSE guidance. So the typical outputs that you get from this this type of type of work is is a summary report. Okay, so this can be best best um, looked at as a kind of management report, so a helicopter view, if you like. So this is where we would present the overview of the facility, um, the key findings by discipline, um, the different categories of, of equipment, the um, the recommendations for for keeping operating, typically which would have a cost, um, and good practice actions as well. The particular cost profile and the expenditure per discipline um, throughout the, the, the rest of the, the, the study period, be it 15 years, 20 years, 30 years, something like that. Then we have what I like to call the engineer's report, the detailed report. So this is all of the background information on why the equipment was categorized as it is. Okay, so so within the, the detailed report is all the main plant, plant, plant items, the you know the uh, the history and condition, the maintenance and inspection, the deterioration mechanisms, the review outcome, the categorization, why it's an A, why it's a B, why it's a C, and an action list um, which 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 comes out with 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 the costs per equipment per year um, and so on and so forth. So the, all of the background information to the to the to the to the classification and the, and the cost profile, um, and then. A recommendations or an action spread spreadsheet, which come which which gives you actions per per plant item, actions per discipline, costs, times, and priorities. Okay, it's very these studies generate a lot of actions. So one of the key things that we do with the outputs is we prioritize that to help to help the client know where to focus uh, focus next, um, and there's the, the associated costs um, with that as well. And then a feedback presentation to, to, to the management team and the engineers team um, as, as part of the, the key deliverables. Um, so a very tried and tested methodology. Um, it can be tweaked if you have a particular problem or, or a particular issue, but they're the typical outputs that we that we generate as part of as part of these studies. Okay, so um, what what do you what would you typically gain um, from an from an asset life strategy study, a sustainable asset life strategy study? Um, we we fix the term based upon discussions with the client. So this is that. So so this could be ten years. It could be fifteen years. It could be twenty years. It could be twenty five years. And that's very important because all of the individual items have a different theoretical design life. So we have to draw a land in the sand in the future, a land a line in the sand in the future, and work back to come up with the, with the cost profile. So so essentially, you get a, a combination of recommendations. Okay. A budget in order to 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 maintain your license to operate, to to sustain your operations. We target those actions and that budget, um, and we prioritize those actions. So, what's the the key things? What's the important things for you to do, and when do you need to do it? What we can also do, and some clients have asked that because there's only so much budget to go around. Is okay, well. Well, what's the impact if we don't do this, you know, this next turnaround, or we do this in five years' time instead of two years' time? So we get to do some 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 nice, interesting work around the risk if you don't complete the action. So again, very flexible and powerful powerful approach to the, to this kind to these kind of studies. So I mentioned earlier in the presentation that we've done uh, we've done this for a lot, a lot of customers. Here's just just some examples. You'll recognise some of the names in there. We've got some of the the big oil and gas majors, the petrochemical majors. We've got uh, clients, you know, in in the in, in in America. We've got clients in Europe. We've got clients in Southeast Asia. We have 
pharmaceutical companies, we've got food companies, we've got fast-moving consumer goods and so on. So, so there's a lot of good, um, a good, a good background and good history that sits within the TV organisation that's been gained by all the, all of this work. So we're not, um, we're not particularly concerned about about whatever you you may have um, in terms of your which which sector you're in or or, or whatever. Um, so, so you know, it's a it's a well tried and tested methodology. Okay, so a, a, a little uh, a quick case study before we talk about the uh, before we have a question and answer session. So this is a, a national oil and gas company in Southeast Asia. Um, it's a petrochemical facility. It's it's one of the plants within this massive industrial estate, um, and it was commissioned in 1990. So when we did the study, it was it was 30 years old. Um, so. We we approached the study in the, in the following ways. We we did we did a um, um, a, a health check or a scoping study where we we, we looked at this, the the breadth and the depth of the assets, and by using a criticality type approach, identified and grouped um, generic items together um, to to work out what we would what we do in detail in in the, in the main study. Um, so so that was the, that was the first phase. The second phase was a kind of top down review. Of, of that information, we'd done an offsite assessment of the um, of the data that, that had been provided. Um, we then visited the site. We had interviews with the, the the management team, the safety team, the operations team, the maintenance team, the inspection team, um, all of all of the people who were involved in looking after the equipment, the project team for for turnaround type type work, um, and came up with with the prior prioritization and the cost profile associated for keeping the facility safe for the next 20 years. Um, the last part was the, the action, action, action implementation phase, which was developed and drawn up with the clients. Um, and we, we, we firmed up on the cost estimates to allow them to move the actions into an, an actionable um, project plan for next turnarounds and so on and so on and so forth. So, so, so a gradual process as you, as you work through, uh, through, through the study. So typically, these this is a study that is ongoing at the moment, um, and you can see here we, you know, the, because we're looking at the whole facility, you know, the shortest we've ever done one of these is in in kind of a three month duration, sometimes six, um, sometimes nine months. So it shows the the level of depth that we get into as as we run through. So here you can see there there was the the scoping study and the, the main asset life study, and then the the project development phase. So. So typically, we will have a team of multifunctional SMEs within each of the disciplines. So there will be a rotating guy uh, or lady. There will be a furnace and boiler SME, and so on and so forth throughout all of, all of the disciplines. So a multi a multidisciplined team will go, will come along to the site. And this is a, an example of, of some of the some of the key findings with 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 some some snapshots from the site. So 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 you know some of the equipment will not last for for the next twenty years. Um, in this particular facility, there were some issues around rotating equipment imp improvements, lots of obsolescence issues, um, integrity of minor structures and the utility systems because they weren't identified in the client's criticality study. Um, they had been they hadn't been looked after as well as they should be. Um, and we also found that a, a number of items associated with the organisation. So we had you know aging workforce retiring. A lot of knowledge rests with individuals, and when they leave. The, the organization forgets. Um, there was a lot of um, reliance on subcontractors. So, so there were some issues around ownership on certain key issues for, the, for this client. Um, and then the, the good old loss of corporate knowledge. Um, you know, within, within 20 years, within 30 years, you, we've had a number of IT systems. We moved from paper drawings to scan drawings to, you know, four or five different document management systems. So, you know things get lost uh, along the way, so so a typical list of some of the high level findings that, that that come out of there. In terms of the the actual output from a cost profile uh, and a categorization, this is this shows the five categories that we talked about earlier. This is real data, um, so you can see here um, for we've got our categories A, B, C, D, and E, which we talked about um, earlier. Um, so most of the Equipment is category D that we looked at, and you you would expect that for a mature piece of piece of uh, 
the facility because the equipment has been well designed, it's been well looked after, it's been well operated. If you continue to look after it as it is now, we don't foresee any issues. The main things that we're looking at are this, this kind of, um, this category A, category B, category C, um, which which kind of kind of add up to to you know to to around about twenty percent of the equipment where you're going to have to do something, whether it's in the next turnaround or, or beyond that. Um, and then we had a, a number of items that were a little bit special for us um, that we needed to go in and look at in a little bit more detail. We talked about the spend profile, so here here is an example of of you know funding. This is in this is in thousands of euros. Um, over a over a kind of kind of six or seven year period, so you can see that the categories of equipment are shown in color coded, um, and where that investment is 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 done per category. So that's a, a facility wide type of, type of data. We can also present data per discipline. So this is a different data set, but you can see here it's color coded by year. This particular facility had a had a turnaround every year. It was a it was, it was a batch batch type operation. So they were able to make the invest smaller investments more rapidly. So you can see here it's color coded on electrical instrument rotating and static. Civil was excluded from that. Um, so that's a twenty year plan. So that's quite interesting. Very powerful um, graph to put up to the senior management. This because nobody's ever seen it before. Everybody works on ten year, um, sorry five five year turnarounds. So everybody's looking to get to the next turnaround um, and not beyond. So again. You know, when the management team tend to sit up here and look at this and they go, well, you know, this is what we're going to have to have to spend. Um, we can also highlight the recommendations per generic equipment type. So you can see here we've split the disciplines up. Um, electrical switchgear, distribution, HV, LV, um, pressure vessels, fire equipment and so on. So, we, you know, once we've got all the data, we can play whatever tune the client wants on this really. So again, it's very, it's very powerful in terms of in terms of the presentations. Um, and we talked about the example output spreadsheet. So he's he's just a, 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 a showing the you know control electrical. So it's 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 around fire and gas and emergency shutdowns, what the recommendation is, comments associated with it, the criticality, the year, the cost, um, and and you know color coded based upon risk. So we, we can risk rank it within the spreadsheet. We can also risk rank it, risk rank the recommendations based upon vulnerability. So I talked a little bit earlier about uh, prioritization because you can see here we get a lot, we got 375 actions across five disciplines. Um, that was, you know, two thirds of those were for continued operation. So you've got to do something. So what do you, where do you start? So we looked on this particular client uh, with HSE and production criticality and the vulnerability to target the the areas of concern. And the reason that we do the two is because often the answers are different between HSE and, and production. We've also risk ranked the output on client uh, risk matrices. Lots of people use um, risk matrices to, to prioritize. Um, so here you can see an example where we've looked at um, how, how difficult it is to do things. So, so this is all to do, you know, how, how hard is it to do and how vulnerable you are and also the consequence around timing and sensitivity. So we can play lots of tunes on this on this data when we after we we've, we've got it all within within the software and the, and, and the database. Um, so when we when we talk to leaders and we talk to to, to kind of to kind of clients, these are a, this is a typical high level question set. It comes from the the CCPS guidance that I quoted earlier. So it's basically what do you know. Uh, how are you managing the risk? What consequences are you looking at? Have you got the right competency? Um, have you got the cost and the time frame? What's your business continuity plan in, in, in terms of equipment failure? What's your equipment con contingency plan to reduce downtime? So, so you know, if you can answer all of those questions, you, 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 you're well on your way um, to managing your aging issues sustainably moving forward. Um, so last few slides now before I hand over to Alan. So we talk about sustainability and asset life extension. Now, lots of lots of our clients have um, have net zero implementation plans, and typically, you know, they, they have a set of baseline data where they look at, uh, for example, scope one, two, and three, CO two, energy, waste, water, and waste. They then look at um, assets and operational and efficiency improvements and techn technological developments. 
so ch big changes. Um, risk ranking um, on, on the, the actual facility, business threats and opportunities, and then a targeted plan. So the, the asset life extension um, area fits in here because we are looking at equipment, we are looking at your operations, and where we identify where you need to change out things and where you need to replace things, that's where we would look at, you know, you know, doing things more sustainably, maybe changing the technology, improving your energy efficiency, um, and so on. Um, so, so again, you know, when you get to the end of life, the business has a decision to make about 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 what it's going to do in terms of equipment, um, how you how you're going to do it. Do we want to replace a like for like, or do we want to do something better? Remember, a like for like is maybe something that's twenty years old. Um, so there's all of those all of those issues. So we we need to make sure that we key in any sustainability opportunities at this stage, um, and again look at like future life cycle analysis for that. Um, so you know it's really it's really useful to 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 look look forward um, for the technical and the and the energy efficiency opportunities that 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 lay there. So um, last slide for me. So the key takeaways from today's session for sustainable asset life. Um, this is a, you know, it's got benefits all throughout the organization. The management team gets a site-wide multifunctional assessment. Um, they don't often see that. Um, there's also a balanced view of actions and costs. Okay. Costs over 20 years is a very powerful picture. Um, and a lot of a lot of our clients like, like this approach because it gives them that long-term visibility that they don't have. Um, you also get, as part of the improvement actions, recommendations and reviews of your asset care practices, so whether they're predictive or preventative, um, and we're, we're able to uh, demonstrate best practice. If your regulator asks what you're doing for sustainability and aging assets, you can answer them. If your regulator doesn't ask, there's a good chance your insurer will ask, so you can ask, answer, answer the same with the same to your, to your insurer also. And we have an awful lot of detailed supporting evidence that we that were gathered as part of the study um, from operations inspection um, and, and 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 the maintenance team. So all of that, all of those outcomes and recommendations are backed up with a big raft of, of technical information from from the team on site and the historical uh, data across 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 the plant. Okay. Um, so that's the, the end of the, the presentation per se. I'll just pass it across to Alan to, to, do, to do the wrap-up session.